Okay, so this morning, as you can see by our title, we're going to talk about discerning the emergent church, more than coffee, couches, and candles. I've been studying this whole uh, emergent movement, per se, before I even knew it was called emergent. Um, I began to read some of the books that are out there, um, some of the different uh, authors, some of the different, you know, heard some of their teachings, and before anybody was really, before I like, knew what emergent was, I began researching it probably for the past, um, I want to say, four years now that I've been involved with it. And what I have found is it's become much more prevalent in most of the, the, the larger churches, larger denominations. I mean, you're kind of seeing it all across the board. It's been very accepted. Okay, So the more I've been looking into it, the more I've been concerned, well, what is it really all about? You know, is it just an alternative way to do church, or is there is it just trying to you know be relevant and reach the culture? What's it really all about? So I want to try and break that down today. We're gonna we'll look at some of the history, and then we'll look at some of the the people involved with it, and then we'll start looking at some of the teaching. And what I've done in this presentation is I've got the actual quotes and like video clips and audio clips because I want you guys you know don't just take you know what I'm saying per se but I want you to be able to see it for yourself, okay? So let's go through this. What is the emergent church? Well, <laughs> just see by the slide here. Defining the emergent church is like trying to nail jello to a wall. The appeal to it, part of the, the thing that draws people is it's so ambiguous. It's very hard to kind of break this down, okay? So... As we're trying to go into this, it can be kind of challenging because the, the, very, the very core of it is like, well, we don't want to be defined by creeds. We don't believe in labels. So it's like, well, how do you, how do you, how do you get a, a grasp on this? So just so you know, it, it's kind of tough. So I've tried to do the work for you as much as I could to kind of break these terms down to where it's, you know, it's going to be in manageable pieces and we can uh, get some understanding. One thing we do know is that something is emerging, but it isn't the truth. Now, how many, do you know who that is? Does anybody know who that is? Yeah, Brian McLaren, okay? And one thing you're going to see is we get, the more you go into this, this verse comes to mind, is Proverbs 14, 12, that says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. Much of what I found in here the more research I have done, comes to the conclusion that much of it is, is, is summed up in one word, really what a lot of this is. I mean, you can use a lot of different terms, but who can tell me what, what, what word comes to mind when you think of this verse? Humanism. Humanism. Okay? Which humanism basically states that the chief end of things is man. Man is the end all of all things. Now, let me just um, clarify today, too, that for myself, I'm going to be mentioning some names today. I've, I've got Brian McLaren up there. And the reason that we'll probably talk a lot about Brian McLaren, it's not that he's the only one in it. Um, there's quite a few. There's only so much we can talk about in the time that we have. But he's probably one of the, like, you know, the grandfather, the influential person in this whole thing. This is not about witch hunting. This is not about trying to demean someone's character, he's probably a really nice guy. Okay, so I want you to be clear from my end of things, I'm not about trying to like, you know, go after people and bring people down and, and, and it's, it's not really my thing to do that. My passion, and I hope it's your passion as you guys are here to study for the ministry, is the glory of God. That's what I want. I want more of God. I want more of the truth. And I want more of the power of the gospel. And yet the gospel has been so, uh, we have taken, in, in, especially in, in America, we have taken the gospel and we have so made it palatable to make it more acceptable into our society. We've tried to be so relevant that we've lost the very essence of what the gospel is. So that's my passion in all of this. My thing is not so you guys can go and like bash people or bash churches. That's not what we're here for. But I want you guys to 
I want you to have the real thing, the raw power of God. Amen? How many of you guys want that? I believe you guys do. You, you want to see lives change. You want to see God working through you. That's what, I, that's what I want for you guys here today. All right, Rick Warren. We've all heard of Rick Warren, right? Okay. Now, when you think of Rick Warren, you're probably not thinking of emergent church. What comes to mind when you think of Rick Warren? Some kind of purpose something, right? Purpose this, purpose that. Okay. Well, one thing we, we and we're not going to get into, into this today because it would be a whole other thing, but one thing I want everyone to understand is you look into these things, you'll see that Rick Warren has been a big-time supporter of the emergent church, both um, doing a forward in, in uh, Dan Kimball's book called The Emergent Church. He's always been a supporter of it, always been a propagator of it, but kind of more behind the scenes, Okay but it's definitely helped in, in getting, getting the message out there of what the emergents are teaching. So if we look, on our, look a little bit down on the notes there in that paragraph, it says, instead of calling it a movement, those of the emergent sentiment would rather call it a conversation. I'm gonna, anybody ever hear that before? Conversation? All right. The leading voice for the emerging church movement is the emergent village, emergentvillage.com which began as a group of young Christian leaders gathered under the auspices of Leadership Network, like we talked about, in the late 1990s and organized in 2001. In their own words, they began, began meeting because many of them were disillusioned, disenfranchised by the conventional ecclesiastical, ecclesial institutions of the late 20th century. So what you had is a lot of people who were saying, you know what, man, the way we're doing church, it's just not working. Youth are falling out. There's sin. There's hypocrisy. Now, have you guys, you guys seen this in the church? You guys seen problems in the church? Yeah, definitely. I mean, guys, I, I don't even want to get into the problems I've seen in the church. I've seen sin, uh, you know, uh, adultery, molestation. I've, man, you name it, I've seen it in ministry. And it's disgusting. And it's wrong. And I've been doing this for 20-something years. Nevertheless, I never felt that, you know what, man, we just need to do something. Man, we just need to change this whole system. Yeah, the church has problems, but it's not the church so much it is the people, okay? Because you've got a lot of people that are living a lot of, there's a lot of compromise. There's a lot of uh, false teaching out there. There's a lot of those, those things. And there's a lot of, I mean, bottom line is there's a lot of people in churches that aren't even Christians. A lot of false converts out there. Okay, so the problem isn't that, oh, we need to just redo the whole philosophy of church. The problem is that the people need to, they need to repent. They need to get right with God. A lot of this is because people are living lives that are very ungodly. Okay, but these group of people got together and said, man, things aren't working, so we need to change. We need to do something different. I found this interesting little chart. I don't know if you, anybody have seen this, has seen this before, but... Talk about humanism, okay? So the emergent people, they see problems in the church, say, well, what can we do to fix this? All right? The bottom line is we need to go back to God. We need to get, get ourselves right with God. But what the, many of the leaders within the church did is it begins to look like this. And this, this particular graphic, this is from the, it's called the uh, religion of scientific humanism. And it's doing very similar, very similar mentality to what the emergent church is doing. So basically, in your lifetime, you need to make this a better world. You do that by being nice, obeying the law, seek knowledge, wonder, and awe. All right? These can all be good things, but it's not the gospel. These may be elements of the gospel, but this in and of itself, we're not here to build a kingdom on this earth. But we're here to bring people into the kingdom. Does that make sense? You guys following? Okay. So when we begin to do this, when we begin to take all these human elements, you know what? I can do all of this, all these things, without God. And it's amazing. Like one man once, he, was, he had come from another country and he was visiting. And he saw all the churches and all the different ministries and all these things that we have in America. And when he saw that, he, he commented to the, to the friend that had brought him there, and he said, you know, it's amazing how much you people can do without God. 